Hey guys, it's Frankie Grusim, and I was asked to make a tutorial on how to send up skin blending in Photoshop. So um, this is Photoshop CC at the moment, so um, pretty much you just open it, you say file open, and you go to the... Um, I use the um, .day files that I've also uploaded on the resource page, so AF head is the AF female one, stuff like that and double click the object. Here it asks me what size, so obviously we want to be a uh, good quality, so I'm going to say 4096 times 4096 and press OK. It's going to take a while because it doesn't like me when I'm recording. Looks like this, I can make this bigger and I can also say, um, this doesn't do it, range Consolidate all to tab, so I have it as a tab. And then I can say view fit on screen to be a bit more zoomed in if I want to. So obviously I have Windows, the tools, so I have this toolbar along here. And um, it's, I can use the normal movement tool to twist my head around. Right, but now I need all the other windows. So what I need for working in 3D is by clicking on window and saying 3D. And I also need window uh, properties. Good. So I can move this up a bit. I don't need the properties window so big. So now I've got this. Sometimes you'll only see this, or you'll only see this, or something along those lines. Uh, sometimes it just goes to the light. So just make sure you go to this little button here at the side. And then I've got AF face, the material, GM1, which is the eyes and the material, and the scalp material. So obviously I usually only work on the face, but what I do first is I click on scene. And I go from uh, face style solid to unlit texture. Um, then I click on the material under AF face. Click here and say replace texture. And I usually load a base skin. So let's just load a base face that is AF female because otherwise it's just weird. Let's load that one. Right usually load a base face, and then I will click on the material again and say um, edit properties or edit material, I don't know, it's sometimes called different things, and you'll see that it comes up. I'm just going to say consolidate to one tab again, and here if you don't have this layers tab, you can also go to windows layers to make sure it comes up, and I'll make a new layer, and I'll make sure that my image size is also the same size as the um, the 3D, or at least um, not much smaller. This is just the quality it's going to be. You can always shrink it at the end, but you obviously can't make it bigger. Make sure I have a new layer, go over here, and it should do the little loading sign, which means that it's loading the edit of the layer. If it doesn't, just close the layer, um, the 2D image again, and load it again via here. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. I'll open, I'll just show you something else, which is very nice in Windows CC, is, uh, I don't know if I have any pictures. I think, ah, uh, here, no. Here we go, just load a face picture. And, um, if I just, I'm just going to copy most of her face, I can't be asked to do it. I copy that and paste it onto my 3D layer. Just zoom it in a bit bigger. What I usually do is I will make it a relative size. Then I can go to um, layers here as well from 3D mode, make the opacity go lower. Make sure Turn it so it's straight-ish. Make sure I click back on the first layer, which is my 3D mesh, and then just use my thing to turn it so it kind of has the same angle as my face picture. Go back to layers, click on my layer again, and first of all, I scale it so it kind of fits over the eyes. I can see where the eyes are because they're white. Obviously, this isn't turned properly, but yeah. 
And then what's really cool is if you go to filter liquify, if it's an entire face pick or a good amount of a face pick, you'll see that this option comes up in Photoshop CC. Um, annoyingly dark blaze showed it, I think. And what this does is it um, recognizes it's a face and lets you modify the face. So I can make the nose skinnier and wider using this slider. I can move the nose up and down. I can make the mouth go sadder and more happy. And I can uh, move the entire eye bit. I can scale the eye. I can move the eye corners out, I'll make it longer, make it higher, and stuff like that, which is pretty useful. But pretty much setting it up just requires you to set the image size so that um, your image is actually high quality and just clicking on these windows and dragging them where you need them.